Hi there and welcome. My name is John Crow. Welcome to Pro Chef Academy. So today I hope you really enjoy the video that I've made for you. Um, it's another technique, another skill that I'd like you to master. Please join me on the journey and we can grow together, grow this community. Like I said, place a comment, hit that subscribe button, share the content and we'll see you very soon. Enjoy the video. In our master class today, our first preparation is going to be utilizing our whole chicken. We're going to cut our whole chicken down I'm going to separate the thigh from the drumstick and um, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to do two preparations for those. I'm going to do a classic Valentine. Then I'm also going to use uh, the thighs. I'm going to create like a little force meat. I'm going to roll them uh, and then show you how they can be utilized here. Roasted or steamed or poached. There's a variety of cookery methods there open to you. And then the two breasts. I'm just going to remove the two breasts and those we are going to use there for uh, just a sweet and sour chicken with some fried rice. So really quick and easy to do. Full of flavor and uh, let's get cooking here. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we're going to larder or prepare our chicken for the different cuts. As you can see here, I have one large uh, chicken for roasting, but I'm not going to roast it. I'm going to break it down and try and utilize as much as I can of it. So the first thing we need to do here is we need to separate the thigh and the drumstick. Okay, so I'd normally just stretch the skin. I would just nick the skin like that, not the flesh. Okay, then we pop out the bone there out of the joint in around the oyster there, okay? Like that little dimple of meat, just there. And then we just remove that like so. Okay, there's one. Turn it over, again then we just stretch, nick the skin, turn it over, and then just pop out the bone. You can see the bone here. Then in around that oyster, like that. And it just shows good skill there that you, can take out that piece of oyster meat that you don't leave it on. Okay, so we've now removed our two thighs and drumsticks. Okay, so the next thing we need to do then is we're going to remove our two breasts. They're going to be uh, used later then for our sweet and sour chicken. So the first thing we need to do is, if there's any uh, excess skin here around the neck, you can just remove that into your waste bowl. Again, then preparation is key. Always have your uh, area clean and tidy, have your board square, Stand square with your board. If you've traced to process or any products that you're not using uh, at the moment there, they can be processed onto a tray. You have a waste bowl there as well, so everything, the area is always clean and tidy, and there's a minimal amount of movement. Okay, so we need to take out our wishbone here, which comes down to both sides here, so we're gonna scrape the bone on each side there to remove the flesh. We're then gonna just, uh, where it is uh, fused, we're just gonna cut it each side, and then we're going to push up along with our finger to where it's fused into one piece and then just take it out. So very, very straightforward. So in with our knife and you can hear that scraping. Okay, and that is just to remove any meat that is near the bone or on the bone for the wishbone there. Cut down, we've now freed one side. I do have a separate video then on the channel there. So if you check out my channel, you will see I have a separate video just showing you how to do that. And we cut down like that, we put a knife down we push up if the wishbone breaks it's not a big deal because again then it's just about about removing it there's one so this was already broken it's not a big deal there we go and there's a the second part we just remove that into your wishbone what we want to do then is we have our pliable uh, breastbone here so we find the center come just slightly to one side of it and cut down Okay, almost move the item then so you are feel it's uh, easy to work with and you have the greatest access to it. And then I'm just using the tip of the knife, tip of the blade there to remove the breasts there like that, right down. And if you follow the, the natural curve of the bones, they will take you right through the joint, cut through the joint there like that. There's one, I'll pop that on there. The other then, the other side then, it's just exactly the same, just apply the breastbone, find the the center, come to one side, cut along, and then it's just a matter of removing that meat or flesh down along the bone to so get the joint through the winglet, and then we just cut it off. Now, also, don't forget that we can still use this. This can be used to create a really good chicken stock, but what I would normally do then is see the skin here. I would remove as much skin as is possible because when you go to make a stock obviously 
the skin contains fat. And once you remove the skin from a chicken, it's virtually fat free. So then if you uh, remove the skin, then you are removing some of the fat that can render, render down and that will reduce the amount of skimming that you need to do in your stock. Again, then all this here can be just cut out and removed there like that. It just saves you a job down the road from skimming. All right, you won't have to skim as much. Okay, so that's right, you still have a little bit of meat on that which is going to give flavor. We'll pop that there. We're also going to use the winglets then for our stock, okay, because they're not going to be part of uh, our sweet and sour chicken. We're also at this point here, just to a uh, little bit of work done for down the road, I'm just going to remove that skin. So like I said, once you remove the skin, it is virtually fat free and really good. Okay, that's that, and then we just do the other one again. Then we're just going to remove the wing legs, and then we will remove the skin. Okay, at this point as well, if you want to do any uh, blemishes or anything like that, they could also be removed. Okay, so we're going to keep them for our stock. Okay, so there's the first part of our presentation so two thighs, two drumsticks, two breasts and our carcass and the wingless then that will be ready for processing for the different things that we're going to do, okay? So at this point here, you just give a, a board a clean or a tidy up if it needs it. Okay, keep your area clean and tidy at all times, really important. So what we're going to do now at this point here is we have the thigh and the drumstick still attached to each other. So what we need to do then is we need to separate these, okay? What you'll see is there's a little line there, that little white line there is always going to be there and that is your point there where you're going to cut, okay, like that. And then we have a thigh and a drumstick, we just separate those out. Again then if you look here, there's our line, it'll always be there, that's our cutting line, right through the joint, okay? So we have two drumsticks, two thighs, lovely. So next thing we want to do for these preparations here, for the two thighs, we're just going to remove a little thigh bone. Okay, there's also be a little bit of cartilage there, just here that you want to make sure you remove, scrape. So you want to take the minimum amount of flesh off. And that's your, that can be kept for stock, pop that there. And then we just check the piece of meat there that there's no cartilage left. I'll just roll that up there for a second. Second thigh then, again, tip of the knife. We just skim down along the bone. What that's going to do then, that other side there, and just scrape down, just remove that thigh bone. So, and that can be kept for stock. Again, just check it then. No excess fat, no cartilage or anything like that there. Okay, so that's the first preparation there for the thigh. So what I'm gonna do now with the thigh then as well is I'm also going to just remove a little bit of meat, okay? Just like this. And we're gonna be batting these out and then I'm gonna use some of the flesh that I removed then to make like a little force meat that I'm gonna put back into it. So, but the first thing is we just uh, remove a little piece of meat. Then I'm just gonna score this here as well. I'm just gonna make it easier to bat out. There's one. The second one here, again, the same thing, just check it again, we have done so already, but I'm gonna remove some of the flesh that I was going to use then to make our force meat. There, like that. There we go. All right. And again, we are going to score this as well. And that's gonna easier, make it easier then when we're batting it out to break down the flesh. Okay, that's two of them. Okay, so I'll pop these to one side again. We're gonna do those in a second. This here, I also have another little bit of extra chicken there to help me with my force meats that I'm gonna use for both of the preparations here. So we're going to blend this here um, down into a force meat. We're gonna add some herbs to it. Okay, so I have some um, parsley there some flat parsley and I have some salt and pepper in there and we'll see what else we have there in our store cupboards. That's the very first stage here of our process. Okay, so our next process here is we've just got to back these out just to make them uh, even in thickness and also so we get uh, the uh, wider coverage. Uh, so they spread out a little bit so we'll be able to put more stuff into them. So again, I just have a uh, clingfilm on the base 
I have put cling foam on top and they're ready now for batting up. So you can use a rolling pin or if you had a meat bat or a pot, okay? So I just have a, a rolling pin here. So again here, we're just gonna Again then, because we had scored the meat then, it helps it to uh, spread. Okay, so that is our chicken spread now, okay? What we're gonna do next then, is we're gonna make our filling then to go into these, and then it's just a matter of rolling them back up. So that's just the next stage here for our uh, like mini chicken rillades, if you want to call them, using thighs, obviously. Okay, so we're at the next stage here. I made my mousse here, which is just to one side here, into my mousse. I had my chicken flesh, seasoned with salt and pepper. Obviously, a little pinch of salt will, will tighten your mousse. A little bit of egg white, a little bit of cream, okay? Into this then as well, I'm also just going to put a little bit of ham here, cooked ham, and I'm going to put that in. So I'm just going to slice that that just give it a quick dice now we'll add color texture and flavor then to this mousse okay, like that okay. I have my bowl here ready so pop that in there I'm also gonna add just a little bit of herb here so just get the herb and squash it up okay we just give this a quick chop and it's going to add a little bit of color as well to our Uh, stuffing. Yeah, like that. Again, just a quick chop. Yeah, like so. so just keep this. I have my mousse here then. that we prepared earlier. So I'm just gonna take some of the mousse out. So you can make this as tight or as loose as you want, okay? Obviously by adding more cream, it's gonna get looser. If it gets too loose then, you can add some more egg white into it and it will tighten it up. So just get as much of this mousse out as we can. Now normally I would also test this mousse you would test it by uh, just poaching a little bit of the mousse in some water, just to see, does it hold together? It's not too tight, it's not too loose. There we go. So there you can see, I have a nice tight, just a good uh, binding um, elasticity to this mousse here. It's gonna be nice. You can see a little bit of ham to it, a little bit of herb to it, so a nice little bit of color there. Again, it's up to yourself here what you want to put through this. There's a variety of um, flavors and stuff that you could put through this. I'm keeping it very simple here today. So the next thing we want to do then is we want to work with our thighs and we want to get them stuffed again then. So they're on the cling foam. Just pull my cling foam forward again. So I kind of have two options here, okay? Um, what I can do is I can do them separately or I can do them together. I think what I'm going to do now today here is I'm going to do them together. So I'm just going to show you that I'm going to make one out of it there that we're going to poach. So that's going to be the next stage here is now the filling and the rolling here of these thighs. Okay, so we have our two thighs ready here. Um, I have uh, put them on fresh cling foam, double cling foam. So that's two layers of cling foam to give me strength. I decided to make just one, okay? So what I'm gonna do then is I've just lined up my thighs, just gently overlapping. I've seasoned them with salt and pepper. I've filled my piping bag with my mousse. So it's just a matter now of just piping along like that. Okay, really easy, simple to do. And then I just put another tiny bit there like that. Okay, so that's lows there now for what I need because again, I'm gonna use some of this mix here going forward to do my uh, balancing. So what we wanna do here, we just wanna roll this over now very gently. So it meets, and then we roll it forward like that. Okay, and then what we wanna do is just wanna roll it back to the beginning. Okay. So we fold over. So 
And then we always want to ensure there that we have a cylinder and that it's even the whole way along. So again, we just roll even all, always from the center out, roll, center out, roll, roll. There we have, okay. And next thing we want to do is just want to gently uh, go along with your hands and expel any air from each end, there like that. And what we're going to do then is we're going to roll. There like that, huh? really easy. Beautiful little cylinder. Okay, we got to tie it off now. So what I do is I put one of the sides underneath to hold it. And we just tie a knot, really easy to do. We push that knot right back in. And we use a double knot then, so we'll do it again then to secure the first one and push it right back in. We get the other side there and we have a nice little pressure there. So roll that again then just to reconfirm. And then what we do is we roll, tie, and push that knot right in there, okay? And again then, same thing again. Roll, there like that, okay? Right, so what we want to do then, we want to just cut off a little bit at each side, but leave enough there in case that would shrink. If you cut it too tight then, it could uh, undo if you were to cut it too tight. So we've a couple of uh, methods then for cookery of this. What we can do is we could um, poach it, we could steam it. Um, another option would be to, uh, we could have wrapped it just in uh, tin foil and then just roasted it. Um, so I would also maybe just give this maybe half an hour, 40 minutes, just kind of firm up in the fridge as well before cooking. And that is our thighs, have a little roulade uh, with our thighs. Really easy, really inexpensive to do, really nice preparation. Okay, so that's our thighs done. So our next preparation is going to be our Ballantine. So Ballantine is basically a drumstick from a chicken generally that you pull back the skin. Obviously you break the bone, remove the bone. Uh, there's still a knuckle attached, which the skin is attached to. You would then uh, remove all the meat from the drumstick. You would make a mousse and then that mousse then can be piped back in. Uh, to the skin, reshape them into a shape of a drumstick or like a ham. Um, traditionally then it would have been stitched. Uh, more modern, what I generally do is I would wrap it in cling film then and then it can be either poached or it can be steamed. Uh, generally then it would be pan fried then at the end just to give it some, the skin some color. But obviously, obviously the um, item is absolutely bone free and then it can be carved. It can be stuffed with a variety of th different things, fruit, vegetables, uh, black pudding, sausage meat, obviously chicken flesh as well, but it really gives um, another uh, technique, another skill that is really um, important that you should know and it's quite easy to do. So let's get started then on our chicken balantines. Okay, so our next preparation is going to be our balantines. Okay, so these are our drumsticks, chicken drumsticks that we removed in the very beginning as you would have seen here. I've one kind of started to prepare and then I've one here I'm going to do from scratch. So it's really, really simple. What we do is we want to pull the skin down, right down to the knuckle, okay? But we don't want to remove the skin, okay? We just want to pull it down over like you were taking off a glove, okay? Just pull that skin right down, there like that. But it's still attached to the knuckle, okay? What we want to do then is we want to take all the meat from the bone, okay? So there's two things you, we need to break the bone here, okay? Okay, like that. Now we'll just cut through there. And we just remove that. So that skin then is still attached to our bone. And then we just want to turn that back out the right way, so it just, just takes a second. And that is going to be our sleeve then, okay, that we're going to put our force meat back into. There's one. And then same with this one here, right down to the end there. And then you can either smack it, or if you want to make sure that you get uh, the right hit in the right place, there like that, okay. And we just want it. What we don't want is we don't want the bone shattered. If you can, and it will help. Okay. And then we just have the very knuckle then at the very end. And then again, we just make the preparation a little bit easy then. Okay. 
we just do it like that okay just like that okay so once we have uh, removed the skin and we have it there in front we've turned it out the right way what you need to do then it's a little like the process then that I did with the thighs there I am going to just remove all this flesh from the bone there like that okay now something like this uh, there is going to be sinew and stuff in it like that so normally when you make a mousse like from the thighs and stuff like that I would generally and obviously going to keep this then obviously for our stock um, once I make my mousse then you can see the sinews there and stuff like that um, or what you could do is you could get a tweezers and pull them out if you wanted it for a better mouthfeel or what you could do is when you make your mousse pass your mousse then through a uh, band sieve there and any sinews there that haven't broken down, anything, any flesh there that hasn't broken down will be held up in the sieve and you will have a smoother uh, mouthfeel to your mousse in the end. All right, so we're just cutting off all that flesh there, just like that. Okay. Okay, so we have a nice amount of flesh here. Again, this will be kept here for my fish stock, or sorry, my chicken stock. Uh, so that goes over to one side. So what I'm going to do then, again, there's a little like the preparation there I did with the uh, thighs. I, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to blend this down, uh, salt and pepper. Obviously, like I said, salt will help tighten your mousse. To that then, I'm going to add a little bit of egg white. Once the egg white has been worked in, I am going to uh, put in some cream, work in some cream very slowly in a food processor, or it can be done traditionally over ice. And then you will add your flavorings or whatever you want to it. Again, I'm just going to use the ham and the herbs. And then we're going to use that then to pipe back in. So it's just going to put that then to one side there for now. Okay, because I have a little bit of mousse here. Just to save time here, I have a little bit of mousse made here already. So we just, again, just keep your area clean and tidy at all times. Uh, you can see there as well, I also have my tray to one side here just to keep my uh, knife clean and tidy so it's not resting on the bench. And then just stretch this out here and we get it so we can put the nozzle in. And then we just, a little bit like making a sausage, you can see there that I'm gently piping in my mousse, there like that. And we would, like I said, in when I was in college, what we would have done then is we would have uh, used a needle and thread then just to stitch this up a little bit there um, or you should, could secure it with like a cocktail stick or something like that we're shaping it back up then into the shape of a drumstick so you can see there's kind of a, a ham shape and hopefully we should have enough mousse then just to do the second one here as well again then just open out your skin nice and delicate like I said there's a variety of fillings there that we can use and then again we're just like it's filling sausage skin we're just piping that mousse right in and just the right amount I think and what we do then again then is we just lay our skin over to encase all that mousse and we shape it back into a drumstick or you could say a ham hock okay so they're pretty much even in size there and that's our preparation there what I'll do now is pop that there pop these onto my tray so what I was going to do with these now is I'm going to get some cling film I'm going to wrap them in cling film I would generally chill these down now just to get the mousse just to stiffen up a little bit before I would cook them okay so a little bit easier to work with so we're going to chill them for about half an hour 40 minutes and then we would steam them or poach them steam them is, is probably a more gentler way to hold the shape there and then again they can be pan fried at the end just to color up the skin and give it a lovely uh, color and help the presentation as well so that was our uh, classical chicken balancing how to prepare and we'll just wrap these up and chill these now for the moment Okay, so we've done two of our preparations here now today. We've done our thighs, uh, made like a little roulade, and we've also done our classic balantine. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna cook a very simple dish, which is sweet and sour chicken, and that is going to, with some fried rice, and that is gonna utilize our two breasts. So let's get on to that.
Okay, so we're going to utilize the breasts, two breasts here, two fine big breasts, probably eight ounce breasts at least here, uh, for our sweet and sour chicken. Obviously they're naturally tender, they're virtually fat free because we have removed the skin. Any other trimming up there that we need to do, just have a look at them. We have the little uh, filling inside, so we're going to take the sinew out. It is kind of a level three here, or it's a more advanced technique there that you should be doing. Um, if there's any muscle or anything like that there, we just cut those out. If there's any blemishes or any bruising, you just check for that as well. Okay, so that's ready that one. Let's have a look at this one. Put the filler here to one side. Pull the filler off again there, we just check that. Anything like that, we just want to take off so we get a perfect or a really nice mouth feel. Okay, any veins, any muscles there, just trim those off as well. Again, any bruising, anything like that, remove that at this point as well. Okay, there's our two breasts there. Nice, neat, tidy. So all we're gonna do with this here is, I'm just gonna cut this down the center. I'm gonna cut this into chunks, trying to keep them as even as possible. Okay, there's one. Second one here. Again, I'm just gonna cut down the center. We want nice chunky pieces there for the sweet and sour. This is like a, just a, a dish you would do at home. But you want nice, consistent size chunks as much as you can. Okay, there's the second one. So you can see nice quantity of meat there that we have. Then we just finish off then with the two little fillets here. And what you see in the fillets here is you have a little sinew here. Okay, well, it's in 99% of the chicken that you eat uh, when, you, when you use the mini fillets. Um, it goes translucent there when it cooks. Okay, it's not, it's not going to be tough. But it's just a good practice there to remove that. So we just want to kind of pinch it there, if you can get a hold of it. And we just want to turn it over and then just scrape it out. So you can just pull it out there like that. There's one gone. And then we're just going to cut this into two pieces, pop that one there. And then this one here, a little bit has been cut off it already. So just get there like that. And then we just, again, we just scrape it out like that. Remove, really easy to do. So again then we just want to cut that in three pieces. So that is our really easy, nothing more to do there. That's our chicken prepared. Next thing we do now is we're going to make our batter and we're going to go through our ingredients then that we need then for our sweet and sour chicken with fried rice. Okay, so here's the ingredients that we have here for our uh, sweet and sour chicken with fried rice. So you can see I have my uh, flour and I have my cider there that is going to be for my batter. And then I have some chili, I have some um, sesame seeds just at the end here. I have my sauce here, which I'm going to run through in a second. And you see I have some honey, I have some, um, also have some um, soy sauce there, chicken stock, some garlic, some chili, uh, my vegetables here. I have eggs then that I'm going to use for my egg fried rice. A little bit of fresh pineapple, some spring onion, I have some cooked rice, and obviously my chicken there as well. So what we have here then for this here is uh, we have about 700 grams of chicken. We have about 200 grams then of self-raising flour and we have some cider, about 150 mils. Then for our sauce here, in this here already, I have some soy sauce, honey, a little bit of corn flour then just for a thick donation at the end. Um, tomato ketchup, chicken stock, a little bit of sherry, uh, some sliced uh, chili, some garlic and some ginger grate in there. So that's all ready to go. And then I have my vegetables then, like I said here. Um, I have um, some red pepper, green pepper. I think I have some yellow pepper there as well. Um, I have some diced pineapple there at the background, some fresh pineapple and some onion there as well that we're gonna dice. So you can dice or slice this. Again, it's up to yourself. And to finish then or to serve then, I'm gonna be doing my um, cooked rice. Uh, I'm gonna put a little bit of egg. I like the egg fried rice. So I'm gonna put some egg to it as well. A um, little bunch of coriander here, just to one side here as well for my rice and um, that should be it really. So without further ado, let's get on and make our um, sweet and sour chicken with fried rice. Okay, so the first stage that we gotta do here for our sweet and sour chicken is we need to make our batter. So I have just pre-weighed here 150 milliliters of cider, okay? And I have my um, pre-weighed flour here as well. So I'm just gonna add that in. Okay, that's gonna make our batter. And the cider is quite nice because it just gives it um, a nice sweetness as well. There we go. Okay, 
If it needs an extra bit, then we can also uh, always give it a little bit. I think that's going to need another little bit, just to make it a little bit wetter. There we go. Sometimes it can be to, to do with the heat of the flour. There we go, that's a little bit better. And, or if the flour is cold, then it may need more liquid. All right, so that's just the first stage there. And what we're going to do then, into that then, we are going to add our, just keep that area clean. We are going to add our, and you can see the air there that's in that, it's like rising, we have, because of the, the rising agent obviously it's in the flour. And the other point to this as well is that we have the, uh, the cider that's kind of carbonated. All right, so what we want to do then is we want to get all this chicken coated. And you can why these gloves are so handy for this. All right, we want to get all that chicken coated then in that batter. There like that. Just work it for a minute. All right, so while that is just uh, resting there like that, I have my uh, oil heating in the background. Once my oil has come to temperature then, about 170 then, then we're going to fry these pieces then off uh, for about three or four minutes here. Okay, so that's just the first stage there now, is to make your batter and to add your chicken to it. Okay, so we have our chicken in the batter. Uh, just our oil is coming up to temperature in the background there. Just keep your eye on it there. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to get some of my uh, veg then prepped. So I have some peppers here, really simple. So like I said, you can do either of, you can slice or you can chop. I'm just going to chop here, okay? I just kind of pre-prep this, wash them and slice them there. It's just a little bit easier, saves a little bit of time. Again, you could put more veg into this, courgettes into this as well. You can put mushrooms into this. Peas, bean sprouts, you can really bulk this out. Really good for kids as well. Okay, very, very straightforward here. Just try and keep them even. Container to one side as always then, so nothing stays on your board. Keep it very clean and tidy. So just try and keep them. Like I said, I'm not cutting them very precise, but I am generally just trying to keep them in around the same size. It's quick cooking. Stir frying is always going to be quick cooking anyway. Okay, so generally you would slice things fairly thin. If you want to be able to see the colors in this, this is going to be all part of the appeal of this as well. Yeah, like that. So like I said, plenty of veg here in this. Yeah, like that. Always make sure your board then is secured, that it can't move. There. Really nice colors there with the red, the green, the yellow. Last couple of bits of pepper there. You could put spring onions in this as well, but I'm kind of keeping the spring onions then for the uh, rice, again then, you just put it like that, and then into chunks, oops, be careful, there you go like that, and again then, this one, your layers, cut down, so we have a dice, We just want to make sure that we mix those all about so they all the onion gets to shivered. Last piece of pepper, like that. And one more onion. And our veg prep. Not a lot of prep to this. And like that. Last onion. So I'm keeping these slices quite big because I want large chunks there. Or I want them to be chunky. And we have spring onion there left in the bowl, but that's going to be for the end there with our rice. So there we have our veg. We just have to mix it about there, get all the colors distributed. So there's our veg ready then, 
ready for our stir fry. That's just the next stage there for our sweet and sour chicken. Okay, so the next stage here, we have our uh, deep fry fryer coming up to heat. We have our chicken in the batter ready to go. We've prepared our vegetables here as well, okay? So we've, uh, the next stage we want to do is just want to get the sauce made. So the sauce is really uh, simple really. We just combine all the ingredients together. I made it a few hours in advance, so I, I, um, that would allow then the, uh, the soya sauce and the gin fresh ginger and the garlic and the fresh chili um, to come together and to, to all those few, uh, flavors to infuse. A little bit of sherry in there as well, which looks so be nice. And all we need to do really is thicken that up. I'm gonna thicken this up with my thickening agent, obviously, which is corn flour, diluted them with a little bit of water. If you do it in advance like I did, always be very careful because what will happen is the water will separate from your corn flour and it will come to the top and obviously the uh, corn flour will go to the bottom. So it's always very important there that we always restir okay, the uh, corn flour before adding it to the um, to your liquid that you want to thicken or the sauce in the background here as you can see. Okay, so we're just waiting for that to come up to the boil. That will infuse all the flavors or right, bring them all together and put heat in. We will then put this in uh, that, and what that will do then is it will um, thicken it up then in a second. Okay, so we're just... Uh... Okay, so we are ready here now. Our uh, sauce has come up to the boil. We're going to add some of our liquid then, which is going to thicken this, so pour it in. And then you just got to cook it up. Again then, you can get this to whatever thickness that you desire. i just put a little bit in. And then we just need to bring it back to the boil, let it cook for about a minute. Okay, our fryer is just about ready here as well. Um, that's nice. If you need it then, you know, if it gets a little bit too thick on you, you can always add a little drop of water to it, it's not a big deal. Okay, so that's fine there. Just let that cook out there for a second, just turn down the heat. My fryer has come up to temperature here now as well, so I have my chicken here. Just always be careful here when you're working deep fat fryer, okay? No rapid movements. Make sure um, the area is clean and tidy. Um, make sure you have gloves if you can. Always try and lay things away from yourself as well. Don't drop things in, especially with this here as well. Um, again, we're coat coating this or encasing this chicken in batter. Um, so obviously the chicken will generally steam, okay? Because in case of the batter. And what we want to do is we need to hold it for a second there. Okay, so you have a lovely piece of chicken here. We want to hold it then for a second until the batter starts to cook. Try not to just drop it straight in because what will happen then is that it will sink to the bottom and it will stick to your uh, your basket. Okay, and that's not the intention there, so I just have another bit here. So I'm just gonna do a couple of bits here, about six bits here, so we can get a portion done. There we go. Back and forward, back and just hold it there so you see that batter is starting to cook. And then that will nearly, it will help it float. Here like that. Get a little bit here. So this will need, depending on the size of your chunks here, this will need about four, three to four or four to five minutes there to cook. Again, it is all dependent on the size of your chicken, the chunks. You could have come in strips as well there, and it would probably cook, thin strips, it would cook a little bit quicker. Um, you could do this with beef as well if you had a sirloin steak. You could do it, uh, obviously it's a tender cut, it's not going to need a lot of cooking. You could do it with that as well. Okay, I would probably just fry off the chicken maybe, or the beef first if you wanted it. Just to sear it. So we already have a beautiful golden color here. I've got, I'll do one more piece here and then I will leave it at that. And then I'll do the rest of this later. So you want to do it in batches here. You don't want to keep adding because you'll overload it. Okay. So just give your basket a little shake there. That looks really, really nice there, guys. So we'll let that cook out. We'll turn off our sauce. So here we have our chicken, golden brown chicken. Absolutely beautiful. That's going to need about five minutes, five minutes to cook. We also have then our sweet and sour sauce just in the back. I'm just going to taste that. So always, again, do your chicken in batches. Always allow your fryer then to uh, recover or for the temperature to come back up there before you would cook any more. Again, another point, don't overload your fryer as well because that's a health and safety point as well.
Okay, so we have just the two next processes to do here. We have our egg fried rice and we have just a stir fried veg or the veg going through our, uh, to go through our sauce. So I'm just gonna have a wok here at the back here and I have a pot. So this pot here, I'm gonna put some of this on here. This is my peppers and my onions here. Just put a little bit here. And then we're just gonna fry that off. Okay, just to soften it. And then to that then I'm gonna add some of my sauce there that I just picked it up. The other one here, what I'm gonna do then is I'm going to uh, I'm gonna add my uh, do my egg fried rice. Okay, so just add my egg, crack my egg. There like that. I'm also going to heat up my rice so it's kind of hot going in just to, to, cook, to uh, reduce the cooking time. There we go. In there like that. And then we just allow it to cook. And then we have our bed then on one side there. Quick and easy to do, egg fried rice is fantastic. Somebody, something that everybody loves in the family. That's a good way of getting the egg into the design then for the kids sometimes as well. So I'm just cooking up that egg. What I'm gonna do then is that once my egg is kind of ready then, I'm gonna just take it off for a second and then I'll get my rice in. That's just ready there. Good heat there. Keep moving your peppers there and your onions. There like that. The egg's ready. Just take the egg off then. Back on. And now we're just going to add our rice. Okay, so we have our warm rice. Add our warm rice like that. To that then we're going to add a little bit of spring onion. To that then we're also going to add a little bit of uh, chili, sliced chili. To that then we're going to add our egg back in. Okay. Have some pineapple, we're going to add a little bit of pineapple to this and some pineapple then to my veg. Combining all these ingredients now. Just gonna add just a little bit of soy sauce then as well. Finish this then, both of these then with a little bit of coriander. Like that. That's our sauce, our sweet and sour sauce ready. Ready to go. Our egg fried rice is just there. And we're just about to plate up. Okay. Okay guys, so here we go. Like I said, it's just a matter of plating up. So we're gonna start here with our uh, rice. Right, so we have everything ready here. Quick and easy to do once you've all the prep done. So we'll just get some of this rice. We put a nice amount of rice here. Like that again then you can see there 
and we have our chili and stuff going through it. We just want to accentuate those, a little bit of chili there for flavor, a little bit of heat. Again then, I have the sauce here, center. Now you, I have more sauce in reserve there, so I'm just gonna put a little batch like that. I'm going to add my chicken pieces. They're like so. And then it's just a matter then of finishing then some more spring onion. Some more chili. And like that. Have some sesame meats, sesame seeds there, just for a little bit of texture there again. Or what you do is you have some uh, crushed peanuts, and then again there just another little bit of pineapple there to give a sweetness and a freshness to the dish. And to finish, then obviously a little bit of coriander then on top. Okay. So guys, there we have it. There's our sweet and sour chicken with fried rice. Really easy, quick to do, full of flavor really fresh and tasty and then we just want to obviously the chef again coming out we just want to tidy up those edges there make sure everything is neat and tidy really colorful uh, fresh vibrant there and really easy and a real crowd pleaser there for the family so sweet and sour chicken there with fried rice front there we have our roulade which is our thighs and you can see there at the back there I have left one of them cut and I've left the other Valentine on cut so you can see the nice glaze there just from cooking them in foam and butter just to give them a lovely flavor and a lovely color there as well so really simple to do Valentine and my roulade with my chicken thighs so that's the end of our masterclass again today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you really enjoyed it. Like I said, these masterclasses are all about developing your skills. They're about putting a number of dishes together and showing a timeline then as well to help and to aid you and guide you in the process. As you can see there, we dovetailed a couple of dishes there together. And that's really important when you're cooking in the kitchen there that you're able to dovetail your timings, you uh, realize your timings, and then you work to a schedule. Think about the processes that you have to do, which, what has to be done in advance, what has to be done first, it's gonna take the longest to do. So like I said, if you like this video, please give me a like, subscribe and share, it really helps the channel, really helps me, gets, gets me up there on the ratings in YouTube. Um, please post some comments, I'm always happy to take comments, and we'll give you some feedback if you have a question or anything like that. So like I said, thank you for joining me for the masterclass today. My name is John Crows, Pro Chef Academy. Until we see you again there, have a great day and bye bye for now.